the pain like I'm Nagato. Got no father like I'm Naruto. Keep the blade on me, Ichigo. Who really wanna go toe for toe? TTR from Tokyo. Diamonds whipping up on the stove. Lucky man like a four leaf glow. Diamonds wanna go. Hello guys, this is Nagato, and welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, I'm basically going to be showcasing about the PlayStation Classic and how to install Bleem Sync and add your own personal games to make your PlayStation Classic, you know, your customizable own system with your favorite PlayStation 1 titles. Because as many of y'all guys know, the PlayStation 1 Classic didn't really came out with some hot hits on it. I mean, they should have added Crash Bandicoot, uh, Spyro, and stuff like that. But for today, I'm going to be teaching you guys on how to add those properties onto your PlayStation Classic. So what I'm going to do now is go transfer it over to the PC and show you all the steps. Alright guys, since we're back on the PC, I'm going to explain about each of the files we need for this process. And always, like I like to state in my videos, the prerequisites. So any of the tools and any of the programs will always be in the description below. And I also have like the links that are useful links as to how to install this, like a written version of this tutorial. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So what you will need to download is this Gleam Sync zip. Go ahead and unzip it either with like RenderBar or you could just regular since this is a .zip file, you should be fine and you could just regularly zip it onto your PC. What you want to do now is go ahead once you unzip it, you'll get these two files right here. And I'll explain a little bit more about these. So Bleem Sync is basically a file manager for your PlayStation Classic. And you, the way how you access it, instead of like most file managers, it will be on the uh, PlayStation itself. Uh, you could mess with the file manager via your PC. So this process works on Google Chrome, I think Firefox as well. I know the only prerequisite that um, you can't use this with is uh, basically internet uh, web browser or internet explorer, excuse me. But most people in like 2019 uh, hopefully they are using chrome or something else but with that being said you should get these two files as well you also need a game of your choice and why not crash bandicoot it's one of the best games of all time and also um just a little talk about the games most like playstation 1 games are in a dot bin q format i noticed maybe some playstation 1 games may end up being a dot img or dot iso that is fine for also with bleem sync 1.1 for this process so that should work as well multi-disc work as well for this process so for example if crash bandicoot was a four part game for example and it had like four parts all you would, you would need to do is copy those four parts in a bleem sync and i'll explain a little bit more about that in another video but just for today i'm just going to be using just one Gee, game that's too bad. but once you got your game uh, in bin key format and you do need it in a bin uh if you're using the bin queue format you both need both files to upload when you bleem sync but i'll explain that later um, I'll have this little notepad right here with the two websites we will need to access later on in the video. These two websites right here will basically host a FTP server to get Bleem Sync File Manager. Once we connect our PlayStation Classic to our PC, it'll basically host this um, website or this IP address and then that's how we can add games via Bleem Sync that way. Also, we will need GUI format. This is basically a format. I'll open it up real quick. This is basically for USB drives, which you also need for this process uh, that cannot automatically format to FAT32. For example, I have a USB drive that's like 64 gigs and it only gives me the option to format to via NTFS and XFAT. And also um, you, with this process, you need a USB drive that is pretty underpowered. You, like you need a USB drive 2.0. I'll have two links in the description for known uh, USB drives that does work with this process. Uh, my, I think my SanDisk Cruiser, or yeah, SanDisk Cruiser Blade, that's I think 16 gigabytes works for this process. And I have an old SanDisk Cruiser for, gosh, I don't know how long I had this. This is, yeah, I know this one I have in my hand right now is 2.0, but that also works with that process. So I'll, all the um, USBs I have used for this method, I'll have in the description description below and with that being said let's go ahead and get started with the process so first things first go ahead and plug in your USB drive into your PC and I'll have it up right here and from your PC let me go ahead and scroll and try to find it real quick what you want to do is reformat your hard drive if it's not already on FAT32 so for example what I'm going to do here now guys Let's go right click over my hard drive, go to format, and then 
you should have it set to fat 32 if you do have the option if not like i said before i'll close this out real quick go ahead and use this gui format program to do the same steps if you don't have the method on to basically convert over to fat 32 but with that being said real quick just go ahead and right click again i was just doing that for you tutorial purposes but what you want to do now make sure to toggle over the fat file system go to fat32 allocation unit size it doesn't matter which it is you can put it either the default or whatever your pc states but it's very important that you have this label to type in capital letters called sony it has to be in all capital letters go ahead and hit quick format and then just start the process if you guys do care about whatever files are on um, your usb drive make sure to back it up i really don't care about any of these files this is my tutorial flash drive that i use for my videos so all what you need to do if you have it backed up to your pc or usb drive then you can hit ok that's just a general consensus i like to tell but as you see here my um flash drive is basically done formatting go ahead and hit ok and then what we want to do now is basically run the USB drive. So our USB drive is cleaned off. And now from here, if you go to properties, it should state that it's on FAT32. What you want to do now is go ahead and take your USB drive and copy these two files over. FlameSync and also basically you want to copy this one that starts with F85.4. And then if you, I'll leave a link in the description as well and this is the official website where you get the download from from basically the um usb uh basically bling sync package or zip file excuse me and it'll tell you all the steps written why so i'll leave that in the description below so since we basically already did these three steps what we got to do now is basically take your console make sure it's unplugged and then i'll show that in a video as well real quick and then basically power it up basically to our pc So I'm going to basically uh, end the video right here until this process is done. So, and then I'll explain a little bit more when I come back. So as you see guys right here, all of my files have successfully transferred over to my USB. But now what we want to do guys is basically take our PlayStation Classic and I'll show you right here real quick on the steps on how to basically plug it into our PC and then from there how to basically get Blink Sync to start up onto our console. So I'll meet you guys back on to the PlayStation Classic. Alright guys, so what you want to do now for the basically this part of the tutorial, what you want to do is take your USB drive that has Bleem Sync on it, make sure it's in slot 2, and then after that make sure your USB cable is connected from your classic to your PC, and as well make sure you put your HDMI cable in last that is connected to your TV of course, and now what you want to do is go ahead and hit the power button to basically start up Bleem Sync. It may take a little second for it to boot up and then once that process has been completed what you want to do now is just wait for it to basically show up on the screen and as you see here guys bleep sync has successfully basically booted up and now is installing the initial hack and it may take a little five seconds and then once that's done basically your playstation classic should reset and then it should seem like it turned off for a second and then it should broadcast an orange light and now once that process is done we're going to go straight back to the pc Since we have successfully installed Bleem Sync from our USB to basically our PlayStation Classic, what you want to do is make sure you keep all your cables plugged in. Go ahead and reboot your PlayStation Classic just by hitting the power button. Leave it on for about 30 to 40 50 seconds just so it can boot into that little main side menu where you used to see RetroArc and Bleem Sync. Just leave your PlayStation Classic there and then come back to the computer. What we want to do now is basically get into the Bleem Sync Manager. So the way how we do that is go ahead, I'll open these uh, two links and you can find both of the links in the description below or you could just pause the video right here all you really have to do is just go ahead and copy and paste if the first link doesn't work go ahead and just try the link with the ip address along with the port but what you want to do now is just go ahead and open up google chrome or any web browser except internet explorer and then just paste into the url and as you see here guys this is bleem sync so you want to probably add games and that's you know the whole purpose for this tutorial what you want to do is go ahead and hit choose files and then basically find wherever your playstation 1 games are at 
so in this case mines are on my desktop and we're going to be using crash bandicoot and then from crash bandicoot what you would need to do is copy both of the bin and queue files so if your thing is in a bin and queue for file format that's what you would have to do and then basically you could just hit open and then as you see here a really cool feature it gets the basically the title um not excuse me not the title id but the cover art for the game and then basically you get um it doesn't really matter to add the description but if the game's in within the database um it should populate all this information for you sometimes with games that you know may be uh unreleased or developer builds i'll show you a little bit more about that along in another video as well um this information won't pop up but once that is done all you would have to do is hit add game and then you'll get this little uh sidebar basically stating that the game is being transferred over so it shouldn't take too long since crash manicoo is really not a huge game and most playstation 1 games are not huge but i'm gonna basically pause the video right here and then once that process is done i'll explain on the next step on where to go from so as you see guys right here basically crash manicoo has successfully been transferred over by bleep sync what you want to do now is go ahead to your playstation classic if it's on go ahead and just power it down and then from there, as you heard from my PC, that the basically the PlayStation Classic has been turned off. What you want to do now is go ahead and take the USB cable out. And then for safe measures, what you want to do from here, guys, is go ahead and just replug everything back in from your PlayStation Classic. Make sure your USB, of course, is inserted in as well. And then go ahead and turn on your PlayStation Classic. And then I'll show on the screen real quick what your PlayStation Classic should look like with the new game installed on it. So I'll meet you guys back onto the PlayStation Classic. Alright guys, so as you see here right now, you should get a little menu that states once you boot up your PlayStation Classic, Retro Arc, and Bleem Sync. But we're going to basically be focused on just the Bleem Sync portion for this tutorial. Make sure, of course, your USB and all your stuff is, you know, connected in like your controller. And as you see here guys, Crash Bandicoot has been successfully on to our PlayStation Classic. And just for, you know, tutorial purposes, I'm going to go ahead and run the game so it shows in live time. And basically this is how you will do the simple method on how to successfully install any PlayStation game, even developer games. And I'll speak about that a little bit more as well in another video. But as you see right now, we're playing Crash Bandicoot. I really wish that this, um, you know, Crash Bandicoot and games like Spyro, Gran Turismo series like 1 and 2, and you know, other, you know, big PlayStation classics should have been on here. Like if Namco Museum. Or I wish they even had like, you know, a little like, mini PlayStation store so we could, you know, buy games. That could have been an easy, you know, turnover of money. But as you see here as well, I almost forgot. If you hit select and triangle, you can basically get the PCSX menu. You can turn on like cheats and stuff. You can go and, you know, run BIOS, change CD images and all that other cool stuff. And then if you want to back out of that, basically... I know even with uh most people like to use RetroArch for this because you use filters and more much more stuff. Um they also have safe states on both ends within the classic as well as also RetroArch. But with that being said, my name is Nagato and I'm signing out. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. If you guys have any questions or having any trouble setting this up, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to answer all your questions. Thank you guys for watching.